Ring like the pellets on the wing, but the K was the key. They made electric chairs for us down day. Last meals, no one feels them to try and stay. On death row like sugar in the late pot. Maybe he could dig a tunnel while the A block. And wear gloves for the razor wire gate top. Scared thugs going crazy in the cage box. The Indiana Pacers just took LeBron and the rest of the Cavs to seven games in which the series was decided by merely four points. It was an incredible series and was really the first time that LeBron was challenged like this in the first round. The big question though, how did the Indiana Pacers almost stop LeBron's parade past the first round in which they were predicted to actually get swept? Now by all means, when I say almost stop LeBron, I'm not talking about shutting him down and holding him to like five points. LeBron has proven that he is a beast and with 99% of the time, put up big numbers. So the last couple of years, actually really the last seven years outside of the finals, LeBron has not been stopped in the playoffs, which includes the first round, semifinals, and conference finals. Huge reason to this is because he's had stars on his team, which includes Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Ray Allen, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love. Now don't get me wrong, LeBron is the main reason they've been in the finals in the first place, but having star teammates made the road easier. But this year, LeBron is playing out of his mind and just might be his best basketball. But even with this, LeBron is playing with no other All-Stars outside of Love who's been injured. LeBron is the only superstar on his team. So what seems like an impossible task that no team could beat the Cavs or the Heat when LeBron was there with a less talented roster. How do you beat LeBron when you simply don't have the talent to do so? Well, there is an answer and a way that the Indiana Pacers almost in uncovered in their series. Now, the Indiana Pacers came short to the Cavs 105-101 in Game 7 at the time of this recording, so they have figured out how to beat LeBron in the playoffs when you just simply don't have the talent to do so. Now, LeBron in the playoffs is a monster, and he needs to be this this year because he is not fortunate enough to have a balanced team that he can contribute just as much as evenly as previous years. With this comes a lot of minutes for LeBron, which looks as if it doesn't even affect him. But however, it really does. See how the Cavs like to rotate LeBron on and off the bench is actually a pretty smart technique in Ty Lue's book. LeBron will play 10 to 11 minutes in the first quarter and sometimes second quarter and will sit out the last 1 to 2 minutes. Now it sounds like it isn't much time but in reality Ty Lue takes LeBron out and almost immediately calls a timeout when the clock is winding down. Now he does this to make adjustments but to also give LeBron an extra couple of minutes. Now on top of this, when the quarter ends you have commercial breaks, etc, which adds 3-5 to five minutes of rest for LeBron. So what looks as if LeBron is only getting about 5 minutes of rest in the first half, he's actually getting around 15 to sometimes 18. So this is a very smart move in Ty Lue's book, and on top of this LeBron will rest sometimes on defense to conserve his energy to contribute on offense. We see every now and then he's slacking a bit on defense. Now this is step one, force LeBron to be active on defense. Now I know it sounds smart to keep LeBron out of the game as much as possible, but what the Pacers have been doing is keeping LeBron involved as much as possible actually. In game two, LeBron went off and was on a little aggressive streak scoring almost all of the points for the Cavs first quarter. It looks as if Cavs were going to cakewalk into an easy W, but they fell right into the Pacers hand. After LeBron's little streak was done, he became more passive and started slacking a bit on defense. He does this like I mentioned earlier to conserve energy and get other players involved. The Pacers on offense forced LeBron to D up, they pushed him on and off pick and rolls, they made sure that LeBron never stopped moving on defense and keeps him on his toes. Whatever happens, they want to make sure that LeBron was using half of his energy on defense instead of 100% on offense. This was step one in an attempt to win the series. This enabled LeBron to be more passive and use up most of his energy instead of resting on defense affecting his offense. Now step two, just as I mentioned, make LeBron be passive. LeBron is going to do whatever it takes to get his team involved because as funny as it might sound, he does need his team just as much as any great player needs their teammates. The Pacers said, LeBron, you're going to have to win the series on your own because while we can't stop you, we can definitely stop Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance, George Hill, Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, and even Kevin Love. The Pacers in my eyes have accomplished this in all 7 games so far that they've played, and no one outside of Corver in Game 5 I believe has really took off on the Cavs besides LeBron, not to mention Tristan Thompson in Game 7. Game 2, George Hill went off a little bit but nothing crazy as well. The overall plan of this was one simple idea. 
The Pacers would rather play a LeBron that puts up 40 points, 6 assists, and 8 rebounds than a LeBron that puts up 33 points, 14 assists, with 15 rebounds. Because, sure, LeBron goes off, but as long as his teammates are at a mediocre level, they will always be in control. Now, step 3, watch the Cavaliers and LeBron crumble. What I mean by this is, since the Pacers have implemented this plan, they have almost shut off LeBron's teammates. This forces LeBron to carry the load himself and keep scoring, but since LeBron isn't as energetic as he usually is because on the defensive side, he can't rest like he usually does, the Pacers are forcing him to move and always rotate on the defensive side, only wearing out the King even more. Because of this, LeBron can't 100% dominate on the offensive side, like he did in the regular season. This forces LeBron to be passive and try to get his team involved. But, since the Pacers have already established control of LeBron's teammates by limiting their playing performance, their confidence is crushed. LeBron can't look for them for help, and LeBron, even if he's putting up big numbers like he's been doing, he can't always win by himself. So how to beat LeBron in the playoffs when you just don't match the talent? This is how. Whether the, place, the Pacers did or not, they uncover something teams just were not able to do. The Cavs may have got through the series, but the Pacers open up a door for teams deep in the playoffs to work on against LeBron and the Cavs. And obviously, easier said than done. LeBron, just because you know about this doesn't mean you can do it. But the Pacers have proved they can do it, they just came up short. The Pacers made every win by the Cavs a struggle and even blew out the Cavs on two separate occasions, Game 1 and Game 6, and was only 4 points short of dethroning the King himself in the first round. Something no one's ever done. But like I mentioned earlier, sometimes there is no plan that can actually work against LeBron and sometimes he's just too good where you just can't win. Thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and in the comments let me know if you think the Cavs are still going to the finals. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys later.